In this video tutorial, we're going to be looking at creating a flyer for a local hotel that is advertising some drink specials. This is how the final copy is going to look. Okay, you can see a lot of elements make up this poster. They're not too hard. It's just a little bit time consuming. Okay, so to get started, we're going to head over to Photoshop and make ourselves a new document. Now, if you're using an older version of Photoshop, this page here is going to look a little bit different um, on your screens, but it's got the same settings over here on the right as what should be on your screen. So what I want you to do is make sure that you set up your page for an A4 document. Okay, and the way we do that is we type in 210 millimeters for the width, making sure you've got millimeters selected first, and you should have 297 millimeters for the height. All right, from there we need to put it into high quality resolution, so 300 pixels per inch, and your color mode needs to be set to CMYK color. Okay, that way it's ready for printing. Then you can click on Create, and you should get a blank A4 canvas. Now, mine doesn't fit entirely in the screen at the moment, so what I'm going to do is just press Control-0 on my keyboard, and that's just going to zoom it out so I can see the entire document. All right, first thing I want to do is start with our background. Okay, so over here in my Layers panel on the right-hand side, I'm going to hit this little padlock and unlock that layer so I can now edit it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a color across the background. Okay, so in this empty space here next to the word layer zero, double click your mouse and the layer style box comes up. From here, I want you to go down and select gradient overlay. Okay, now you can check that box, but what I need you to do is actually click on the word gradient overlay. So you get these settings over here. All right, from here, We'll leave the blend mode as normal and the opacity as 100%. We're going to change the color here to what I've got. Okay, at the moment you've probably got something like black and white. Okay, so we need to change that. So this left lever over here, it's like a little padlock. I want you to click on it. Okay, and then go down the bottom to where it says color and click in the black color box. Whatever color box is on your screen. And we're going to change the color simply by typing in this box down the bottom. I'm going to type in a hexadecimal value. So I'm going to write in 075677. Okay, and that gives us this light blue kind of color, or navy blue kind of color. And we'll click on OK. The next thing I'm going to do is click on this little diamond in the center here and drag it to the left. And you can see down the bottom here the location changing. I want you to drag it until it gets to 10% for its location. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is make sure that our right lever over here is white. Okay, so just click on that white lever, ensure that your color is set to white. And we'll click on OK. Click on OK once again. And we're going to look down now at the style. Okay, we're going to change it from linear or radial, whatever it was. We want to select the second one here to radial. Okay, that's going to create a circular kind of shape. We're then going to reverse the colors, so check this box here that says reverse. So we're blue on the outside, white on the inside. And we're going to scale it to about 150%. So just drag that up all the way to the end. Okay, you can see now we've got a nice light blue around the edge of our page and white in the middle. So you can click on OK, and that is our background looking good. From here we're going to make a new layer now. I'm going to put some clouds in the sky. Okay, so I'm just going to hit this little up arrow here to hide my effects. And if you want, you can double click and give that layer a name, like, I'll just call it background for now. And I'm going to make a new layer by hitting this piece of paper next to the trash can, the little folded corner. And you'll see layer 1 appears in our layers panel here. Okay, now we're going to need some special brushes to complete this task. So over in your accounts in G Drive, you'll see some cloud brushes and some lens flare brushes that we need to install. All you need to do is double click on them and they will install in Photoshop. So when you grab your brush tool now and head up the top to where you can change your brushes, you'll see that you've got cloud brushes in there. Now yours might look a little bit different to mine. You might may not have folders like this. You may just have a big set of brushes. Okay, and that's fine. You just need to look for these clouds. Okay. So before we start putting these in, we need to make sure that our foreground color down here, mine's yellow at the moment, we need to make it white. We want these clouds to be white. All right, and now we can grab our brush tool again, go up the top to select our brushes, 
And in amongst those cloud brushes there, I want to grab the one that has the 1396 size under it, or it looks like this one just here. Okay, and we're going to put this up here in the top left. Okay, you can use your square brackets to make this cloud bigger and smaller as you feel is necessary. I'm just going to click once and you can see it drops a cloud into the top left hand corner of my page. Okay, what I'm going to do next is change my brush to another cloud, the one at the end here that says 850. Okay, and I'm going to come out, I'll make this a little bit bigger. And I'll put it in the top right of my page. Probably about there. Okay, remember you can press Ctrl Z, undo it and put it in again if you're not happy with its position. Okay, but there's our two clouds that we want to put in the sky. Now on this layer one, just go and select it. I want you to change its opacity. So that's how transparent it is. And I want you to drop that lever down to around 60%. So that's going to decrease the opacity so they're a little bit see-through. So the background is now shining through the clouds. That's our clouds done. Next thing I'm going to do is bring in a couple of palm tree leaves and put them up the top. And the way we're going to do that is just go to File and Place Embedded. And you'll need to navigate your way through to the Curriculum Drive folder where you've got all these different assets. And I want you to find the palm leaf and click on Place. That's going to place a palm leaf on your page. Okay. I just want you to resize it a little bit, make it a bit smaller, and then press the tick at the top of the page. Okay, it's a little bit sharp for my liking at the moment, this palm tree. So what I'm going to do is just make sure it's selected. So in your layers box, you should see that it is highlighted. And we're going to go up to the filter menu and choose a blur. And it's going to put a slight Gaussian blur onto this. You'll probably barely notice the difference. Okay, when it asks for the radius, type in 2.5 pixels. And if you turn the preview box on and off, you can see that it just slightly blurs it. Okay, so it's not as sharp. So click OK. Um, once we've got it blurred, we might give it a bit of a rotate. So you will need to grab your Move tool and ensure that Auto Select and Show Transform Controls are checked up the top. And you should see this bounding box appear around your uh, leaf. If you hover your mouse just off the edges, you're able to oops, you're able to pick it up and give it a bit of a rotate. If that warning box just appears like mine did, just click OK. That's fine. Give it a bit of a rotate. You may need to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to get it up here in amongst the cloud. Probably something like that. Press the tick at the top when you're done to apply those changes and you should have your palm leaf sitting off the edge of the page like so. Oh, you might even go a little bit higher there. I am kind of covering up the cloud I just put in, but that's all right. Okay, once we've got that in, we're going to duplicate this leaf and put it on the other side of the page over here. So like a mirror image. So over here on my palm leaf, um, layer, just select it and then right click on it and duplicate the layer. Just click OK for the name and you'll have a new leaf that you can use your move tool to drag across. You want it in the same position, just flip it around in reverse. Okay, so to flip it around you need to make sure it's selected. Go up to your edit menu, head down to transform and choose flip horizontal. That just flips that leaf around making sure it's in line with the other one, just move it off the edge of the page there. So you've got a mirror image. Again, that box comes up, just click OK on that and press the tick when you're finished. Alrighty, so we've now got our two palm leaves off the top of the page. That's looking good. Uh, next thing we might do is we're going to put in a dark, like a vignette around the edges of the page. Now a vignette is basically a little bit of dark shading or sh shadows around the edges of the page. Alright, so what we're going to do, over in our layers box here, just hit those little up arrows to hide all those effects on our layers. And we're going to make a new layer. And I'm going to double click on its name there and just call it Vignette. It's spelt Vignette. Bit of a funny word. Okay, and with that layer in, I want you to drag it below the palm leaves. So it's above layer 1, but below the palm leaves. So it's in the middle of our layers box at the moment. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to change our foreground color over here in these two little white boxes. The foreground color needs to be black. Alright, so select black. And then we're going to grab our gradient tool. Okay, that's this one just here. It's got like the dark fading into the light. Alright, and from our box up the top here, you just want to choose the first one where it's got black. Actually, not the first one, the second one. 
Okay, so it's black fading into transparency. So it's a little black color fading into those little checkered boxes. All right. And now we're going to draw a gradient on each side of the flyer. Okay, and all we need to do is we click our mouse once and drag across just a little bit onto the page. And you can see now you get this dark black gradient on the edge of the page. And I want you to do that on every side. So the left and right sides. I might need to zoom out a little bit here to do the top and bottom as well. You want to try and get at the same distance on each side, if possible, or very close to it. So it looks something like that when you're done. Last thing you want to do to make this look a little bit better is just change the opacity over here. Uh, not the opacity, sorry, the blend mode. Next to the opacity, you'll see the word normal. Just change the blend mode there, and we're going to choose overlay, and that'll help it blend in with the background a bit better. So now we've got these darker edges around our page, and that means... The viewer's eye will be focused more towards the center of our document. Okay, if we turn that vignette visibility on and off, you can see the difference it makes. It's only subtle, but you have now got a slightly darker border around the edges of your document. Alrighty. And the last thing I'm going to do on this background now is just put a little spotted pattern in the background. It's going to be very, very subtle as well, but just add a bit of, I suppose, texture to our flyer. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to make a new layer again, but this time we're going to choose a little circle here. It's half coloured in and half not coloured in. And we're going to go up and choose this pattern fill layer. Okay, it's going to come up looking a bit ugly at the moment, but we're going to change that option that's already there. And we're going to choose the black and white spotted dots. Okay. And everything else is all good there. The scale's 100%. That box is checked, so click on OK. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to move this up to the top of our layers box, like so. Okay, and then you can see in this pattern fill one layer here, we've got two boxes. We've got this little checkered box here and then this white mask box over here. I want you to select the white mask box just here where my mouse is positioned right now. Okay, it's really important that you get that selected for this next step, otherwise it won't work. Now using our brush tool over here, we're going to go up and change our brush. I'm not going to use a cloud anymore, I'm just going to go back to my general brushes. On yours it might just be the very first brush, this really soft brush here. Okay, it hasn't got hard edges, it's just a nice soft brush. Okay, and we're going to make sure that our foreground colour down here is still set to black. What we're going to do, if we've got that colour black selected and we've chosen a mask over here, we can actually paint now on top of our layer and that black color will erase what's behind it. It's a bit like an eraser tool. All right, so I'm going to make my brush nice and big so it almost fills the size of the page. And I'm just going to click a few times around the middle here. And you can start to see the background shine back through. Okay, just I clicked about three or four times then. Okay, and the last thing we're going to do now is just blend this spotted pattern into that background. Okay, so with your pattern fill layer selected, change the blend mode from normal to divide. Okay, and that has now blended those little spots in to our background. If you zoom in, you'll see the little spotted effect that we've got going on. If you zoom back out by pressing Control zero, you'll barely notice it. It's just a subtle effect that just adds to the overall appearance of our poster. Okay, so that's our background all set up and done. All right, so what I'm going to do now is just highlight all of these layers over here in my layer box. To do that, I just click on the first layer, which is the pattern fill, hold shift, and then click on the bottom layer. I'm then going to pick them all up and drag them down to the folder at the bottom to make a new folder. And that just groups them together into a folder, which can be expanded so you can still see them. Okay, where it says group one, just double click on that. We'll give it the name background, press enter. That's our background all done. So right there, I'm going to save it. Make sure you save as a PSD file or a Photoshop document file. Okay, I'm just going to save my desktop for now, but you guys save in your documents folder in an appropriate place and just call it Drinks Flyer. All right, so I'm going to stop the video here. This is part one of our tutorial done. That's the background out of the way. We'll come back in the next video where we're going to start to add the drinks and the fruit to our page. I'll see you in that video.